We're live. All right. Okay. Hello, everybody, or hello, whoever is here. Well, you know what? We need to explain, Mithy. First of all, hello, you are at the Mom and Dot 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 podcast. It is the live monthly Tipsy Ellipses episode. And it used to be that we would do it the first of every month. Mm-hmm. But then Missy and I figured out that started to mean that we were doing it on Fridays and Saturdays. And that was not cool to any, to us. Or to Inevitably, some people would be out of town or we'd actually have some sort of plan. Yes. So now we have started doing it the first Tuesday of every month. And we're going to see how that works. So it's live the first Tuesday. And then in theory, the podcast should be uh, available to listen to then that same week, but on Friday. Um, and our regular episode will come out on Thursday. So that is a little bit of difference from our usual tipsy ellipsy month. And so uh, I, I'm i the only one that's kind of tipsy, not even, you know, Maria, we were talking about uh, where our tolerance is a little bit low because yes. my husband and I, because we are trying to get a little healthier, have stopped drinking but pretty much always, unless we go out to a restaurant or something, we'll get yeah. a drink. But I got to tell you, during the lockdown and all that, we got pretty yeah. used to it. two glasses of wine at dinner and then maybe a bourbon while we were watching TV. And now I think of that, I'm like, I would be here right now. <laughs> yeah. Not like my, like my baseline. That was just Tuesday or a Thursday. <laughs> yes. Yes. We're really trying to keep things to the, like an out to dinner or a social engagement. Like I don't need to have a drink just because it's Wednesday or just because I'm used to it from COVID. Or just because it's dinner time. I, um, yeah. so I've had a couple of sips of my Chardonnay, which I made the mistake of buying. I used to like buttery Chardonnay. So I saw the label that said buttery Chardonnay. Oh, I guess how I got I mean, if they describe themselves as buttery Chardonnay, it's going to be really and I've decided I don't like buttery Chardonnay anymore, but I've got two of them. <laughs> so I've taken one for the team. And there you go. I should just mix it with my pineapple Waterloo. This is my new yeah. favorite beverage. It's so good. World Waterloo. And they're hard to get. Amazon Fresh and HEB runs out of them all H-E-B. the time. Yeah. Really? But our little neighborhood grocery store has them. So we go and get it for them. Um, or what's the Costco has them a lot, but you don't have a lot of choice in the flavors. You get like the black whatever in a pack. Uh, yeah. 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 I drink quite a bit of mineral water and uh I just got a soda stream today. Because <gasps> yes. um yeah, just because uh, my my nephew has one when we went to Germany, they had it and I'm like, it's so easy. Why have I never thought about it? I went to Costco, it was right there on the aisle, and I'm like, today is the day. I gotta do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, we did, we did, but have my daughter had, it was very exciting. You know, my daughter's six years old and it was very exciting to do the pumpy thing and it <laughs> most of that yeah. bubbles in there. And now we just put some lemon in it or like pineapple juice or whatever, you know, and you just make it fresh. So I'm like, I feel really good about the environment and like saving money in the long run. And it's just <laughs> really that expensive to start with. So new world today. Yes. I'm a big fan. Yeah, that's a good sales job. The only problem was, <laughs> I go. ran out of my canisters during oh. the pandemic and I refused okay. to go into Walmart to go get a new filter. Is that the only place you can get them? No, you know, I discovered um, Bed Bath & Beyond also okay. has them. And I just, for some reason, I thought, I don't know why, I really overcomplicated this. I I pictured me having to take this canister like into some dark room at the back of Walmart <laughs> and like then we're going to hook it up. Like like I was going to fill that at a gas station. Like, I thought they were literally going to refill my canisters. Oh my God. I, oh, that's awesome. And so I really over, but I went into the Bed Bath and Beyond and just happened to have them. And I saw that they have them. And they're like, oh, yeah, you basically just go grab one off the shelf and then hand them yours. And, yeah. and then, and then they give you the rebate or whatever for turning it into a thing. So, yeah, it's amazing. Okay. And I love it because you can control how fizzy this. We are a commercial. For the, <laughs> you totally are. Like tomorrow, I'll be buying a soda stream. Yes, <laughs> got to you buy a soda stream. Look, this is like oh. we're doing our pre-roll ads because we haven't but, even done our introductions yet. But we're yeah, now we're we should do that. Soda stream. Yeah, get some money, Waterloo and soda stream. They don't know they're sponsoring us. 
Okay. Well, I'm going to start with my intro. Hello. I am Suzanne Kurtz. I am a mom and dot, dot, dot writer, LGBTQ ally. And this week I am at Texas Conference for Women attended, attendee, attendee. You know what? I'm also, this is, I have lost count. I think it's the fifth, sixth, or maybe seventh year that I've been part of their quote unquote street team which is such a silly name. It makes it sound like we have a gang or something. <laughs> like we have a handshake or some matching jackets or something. But it basically means that I go to various sessions that they've assigned me to and I live tweet. Uh, oh. It's the sessions that I'm at. And I'm going to do a double shout out. I'm not sure if we're doing Look, Listen, Learn this episode, but if we do, I'm doing this shout out for... Um, Michelle Polar, who wrote the book Hello Fears, uh, which I am listening to and also re I li was listening to it and I was like, I bet this book like has a workbook component. I just had this like guess about it and it does. Yeah. And it's yeah. so cute and it's got like little places where you can write and stuff. So I was listening to it and then I decided to buy the actual book. We are, we would be pretty excited if we could get Michelle Polar to be on the show. But in the meantime, I'm going to settle for being assigned to her session. She's going to be one of the sessions at the Texas Conference for Women. So I am going to be live tweeting that. And she is very lucky that it is virtual this year or else I would be a great <laughs> <friend. laughs> We like, want to be in our podcast? Want to be in our podcast? Want to be in our podcast? <laughs> so, so, Missy, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm sure. I'm Missy Stevens. I'm a mom and dot, dot, dot writer. Uh, foster care advocate and this week almost full-time sports parent so I just walked in the door from one kid's game and I'm getting up really early in the morning to go to another kid's swim meet so it's all about the sports and the fitness this week and this month we are so excited to have Maria Luque did I get that Luque yes. okay <laughs> and Maria is a mom and dot 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 fitness expert health science professor, and one of the most important things for us tonight, menopause nerd. We're going to be talking about <laughs> menopause and all the things you did or did not want to know about menopause and staying healthy. But I'm going to read a little bit more from the bio because it is so impressive. So like we said, busy mother, passionate about sharing knowledge and helping, helping women lead healthier, happier lives and the creator of Fitness in Menopause which is a company dedicated to helping women navigate the challenges and rewards of menopause. Oh, yes. Thank you for highlighting your awesome logo in the background, which is much better than my background, which is a bunch of old Navy shirts circa like 2004. <laughs> my background. Um, and then, oh, look. Oh, my goodness. You, you were in the Air Force. I yeah. don't know that. I, I sound surprised that I did read this bio before. But I, uh, <laughs> but tell us about that a little bit, can you? Yeah, I'm gonna, we're going to bring your bio to life. Every sentence, yeah, you know, I'm going to make you love it in full. I yeah, tell us a little bit about your time in the Air Force. I uh, joined pretty much probably a year after I moved to the state in San Antonio. I joined the Air Force. I was in for seven years. I was in San Antonio most of the time. I was in San Antonio for five years and then moved to California for two years and then got out to pursue... Um, fitness um i wanted to i wanted to start being a physical therapist but that kind of changed and everything but during the military my middle military time i was a human i mean it was logistics and human resources like if we translate it to the civilian world so i did the background stuff in the office for so people could go out and do their stuff right so i, I actually was never deployed thankfully but when i got out i got to be the fitness program manager so i was part of when the air force went from doing the cycling test, which was kind of, we were, the Air Force has always been made fun of because they're just like, oh, you know, fitness test is like getting on the bike and doing a couple of push-ups versus everybody else is doing, you know, two mile runs and doing things. And yeah. so I was part of the uh, team that rewrote the fitness, the new fitness guidelines for the Air Force, which was incredibly exciting to do. Oh. And we launched, launched it. And ever since then, I got so passionate about, uh, I did that for three years at the end being the program manager for the for the base there mm -hmm. and then i'm just like this is what i need to do and uh i need to get out 
So that's why I got out of the military. I mean, I enjoyed, I, I like a structure. I'm a very structured person, so I like a good structure. I don't like to have to pick what I wear. So a uniform is always great. And you know, now I'm doing fitness, which means I don't really have to pick fancy things to wear. I can just wear my, you know, workout clothes all day. So it, it yeah. kind of goes with my personality there. And so, yeah, so that was, that's kind of like the path. And then from there, just kind of went that way. Love it. Well, and then, so now your course, the menopausal fitness training, the menopausal client is an NASM, AFAA, and A, is it ACE or ACE? ACE. ACE accredited continuing education course for fitness professionals. So you can teach then other fitness trainers. You're kind of a teacher of teachers um, in order yes. to teach this course. Is that correct? Yeah. So I, um, I started writing for a fitness journal occasionally. Like I, when I, when I did my dissertation for my, uh, P PhD, which was a research study examining what role physical activity plays in quality of life during menopause. And, uh, after that, I pitched an article to a fitness magazine. Cause I'm like, more people have to, like, especially fitness professionals need to be aware of this time because women can't just be all trained the exactly the same way. And you have to take into consideration a lot of things. And that's when I started writing for this magazine, which is a fitness magazine that is geared towards fitness professionals. And it's all very peer, like not that peer reviewed, but it's based, it's very science facts. Like if the editor checks it, like it's not just me writing a blog, like there's a lot of science that goes behind it. Right. And so then I started doing conferences for that same organization, uh, which is uh, idea. And so that's when I started, like, I need to just make a course. And so I've been doing conferences for fitness professionals on training females. And so it's, it's all been women. So I've taught training the female client, training the menopausal client, and then just menopause one-on-one, -on -one. So, uh, you know, trainers and fitness professionals get to know just like, what is it? I mean, what is menopause, right? Why is it such a big deal? How do we know? I mean, we're just going to continue doing what we do, right? And it's a big one. And so that's yeah. how I decided, I'm like, I'm just going to create a continuing education course so people can take it. And that's what I did. It took me forever, but finally, two years ago, I finished, finished it with the help of a friend. And so that was a, a, one of it's those rights right. when you do something and then you're like, eventually, and then I had my daughter and then that kind of like, you know, you had that, like a book, right? I also thought, I'm like, I'm going to write a fan of plot book eventually. And now that is kind of like, but the course <laughs> was better way better than that. <laughs> anyway, and then you dust off the project that you put to the side and then you're That's like, right. yeah. And now she goes to, you know, she started first grade and I was just like, now my life is a little, I'm going to be one, everyone that is on track, picking her up. Dropping her off, like, so yep. things are different. As you all know, like, as mothers, you know, yeah. like, okay, and now I have this window, and then shuffle back into another track that now I have to adjust. So, yeah, but it's been fun. So, yeah. Well, and that's why we love, and we were so excited to have you on the podcast, because we follow your Instagram account, mm -hmm. where you really do highlight, you know, here's just some things you can do during those windows, you know? Yeah. Yes. Our life is kind of in these, sometimes in these unpredictable chunks. And, you know, by the time you're in menopause, maybe your kids are a little older, but not necessarily. We have a lot of friends yeah. who started um, having kids later in life. And so they may be going through menopause and still dealing, like you said, with the, you know, the elementary school yeah. pickup line, not necessarily yeah. out of college. There's all kinds of different life stages. Um, so yeah, it, there needs to be a lot of flexibility based on what time someone has or what we're going to be talking about, what state of space we have. Missy yeah. up in her, her big living room tonight, but I'm thinking... right now I'm in the kid cave. I'm yeah. in the, this is like our office slash kid game room. It's just be glad you don't have smell of vision. Yeah. <laughs> it smells like boys. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to be going through, uh, thanks to Maria, some exercises that you can do without special equipment, without a ton of space. I'm going to be doing it in my little closet space. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and just without, with the stuff that I have on hand in here, uh, no pants and stuff. I'm wearing, well, I'm wearing my sad cap, my last cap 10 K shirt that actually happened before the world locked down. I don't even think it happened. I think that was the year it got rained out. 
they still oh, get I think you're right. Oh, yeah, the Cap 10. Yeah, I think this was the yeah. breakout year, and then it was the COVID year. So right. poor, oh, poor Cap 10K. But anyway, <laughs> we'll, we're doing it next year. And our, my daughter and I are getting ready to train for the half marathon. Oh, It'll be her first oh. one um, for the Austin half marathon. So I'm at Jingo. To... So I need. And it's we, been a long time for me. Our, our training training starts the week of Thanksgiving. So that means I have between now and Thanksgiving to get up to my three miles because that's kind of the yeah. baseline for training. Um, so I'm excited to have some strength work to mix in with the cardio because oh, anybody, yeah. anybody who's ever trained for a race like this knows that they have the days. It's like you run this day, then you do strength the next day, and then you do your run, and then you do this. And I am the person who usually does the run. And then just does nothing. I just kind of skip the days in between. I don't run anymore. But when I did, in fact, there's a marathon poster behind me. But when I did, I always skipped strength. Now I love strength. And I think I would do it in addition to the running. Um, but back in the day, gosh, I just can't imagine how much better things would have been and how many fewer injuries I would have had if I had yeah. paid attention to the strength days. No? So tell us, Maria, tell us why especially pre and during menopause, it is especially important not to skip the strength days. <laughs> I mean, I feel like a lot of things are common knowledge, but then it, at about 35, rather than using muscle at an accelerated rate, like that is aging, normal stuff. Bone mass, also we start to lose some. During menopause, that is accelerated. So now on top of normal aging, you're going to lose an increased amount of muscle if you don't do anything and bone mass, which is critical, right? Because uh, with, there's a lot of risk of, especially in postmenopause, for osteoporosis and fractures. Mm -hmm. Like that is an actual risk factor. And like for women, postmenopausal women, it's incredibly risky if you don't. So the prevention yeah. itself of just uh, resistance training should not be an option. It should be number one. Like that is always my recommendation. Like if you do nothing else, resistance training is really what you should do. I feel like most people tend to like it once they get into it and if they know what they're doing. And that's the, that's the thing. Yeah, I feel it's really empowering when you feel like you're getting stronger. I've never heard anyone say, I really hate how strong I feel now. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> no one has ever said that. Never. Any client that I've worked with, it's like I'd make a point that, that I'd say, just remember... Like we're doing this right now, you yeah. know, several weeks or months later. I'm just like, do you remember when we weren't able to do that? Like, it's just I get, it's focusing on those small things because you for, tend to forget where you started. And then yep. when you, it makes you feel real powerful. And then resistance training, just from a health perspective, not only from a, the metabolism, obviously the metabolism issue, a uh, part of that muscle plays, and then just the keeping your bones strong and keeping yourself from I mean, in the end, it's like, it's going to help you hopefully not have any fractures. It helps you in all yeah. sorts of ways. And just because we are kind of, and I hate to be doomsy about it, but it's just natural. It's biological. It's how it works. Like we have age and we have a lack of estrogen that kind of play a big role in losing muscle. And once we start losing muscle, then a lot of things go with it. Right. So that's why I always say resistance training and don't be afraid to lift heavy which means the progression, like you start somewhere, but not lifting heavy, like go up there and try it. And I always recommend, I think a lot of women are afraid to just even start. Um, mm -hmm. I have a heavy bag here. And sometimes when I, I have been told to love them, like go ahead and hit it. And most people start, they're like, I don't know. And <laughs> like, no, 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 no. <laughs> once you get a tap or just like, I'm going to have it. So that when you feel empowered, something and knowing that someone's guiding you, um, we have so many, so many free things out there now for like, actually there's really good fitness professionals out there that put free content out there. I try to do it. I try to put a lot of free content out there. I have a YouTube channel where I try to really also share things that you could do. You got five minutes. Mm -hmm. That is the big thing yeah. for me. I'm just always trying, like you were saying, it is the, I'm sitting in front of a computer. It's just like, I don't want to have to put on my workout clothes and go out the door and go to a gym yeah and get you know like it's that thought process of all or none like i either have to take a full hour or why even do it and it's yeah it's a, that's a wrong mindset like we have to really start thinking if i can do five minutes every so often you yeah. put yourself an alarm or yeah or easy things like every time you go to the bathroom instead of walking there you could be lunging to the bathroom or you could be <laughs> i mean bear crawling to the 
bathroom. Like those are small things. And every time that you like, you have like, cleaner floors start. than I do. <laughs> <laughs> that will also, you put little mittens on or <laughs> not to clean your floors. <laughs> and a slider workout. I mean, this is great. It's like you put, just how you get your kids in there, put them on your puppies too, like little pants. They go around. <laughs> I mean, you gotta, you gotta find the fun in it. And so it's those kinds of things like break it down into manageable chunks. Um, with that, I'm going to show like one of the exercises that I recommending is like chair squats, right? If you're sitting on, you're sitting on your chair and instead every time that you get up, imagine how many times you get up during a day that if you actually took 10 squats onto your chair, every time you get up and every time you come back, that's 20 squats for one time that you get. Should we do some right now? Should we do some right now? So like, for instance, I'm going to actually put my chair up here. So maybe. Or maybe I'll okay. change it so you can kind of tune my back or whatever. So if I'm here, and I'm going to show it from the side maybe so it's easier to see. Okay. Um, Generally, your chair is right here, right? Most people have a chair kind of like at that 90 degrees. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you would kind of go here without completely sitting back. It's kind of like a touchdown, like a boom. Okay. Oh, okay. Get my chair yeah. right now. So I'm going to go down here and right, turn right there. I never always I got a chair on. There's my chair. There you are. Oh, and you've got your bike shorts on and everything. Ew. I've never even thought about doing this on my chair. This is a good starter for the point that if you also, if you don't feel strong enough or you don't trust, like, obviously you can do this without, like, you can get up off your chair and go a little right if you want to go, right? But if mm-hmm. someone is just starting out and they don't trust themselves with the squat, this is a great way to kind of know. In yeah, worst case scenario, I'm going to sit up down, right? So yeah, it, imagine this. I just sit down. <laughs> Got to go to the bathroom. So before you get up, you're going to go. All right, got my ten squats. Do some squats. Boop. I want to go to the bathroom. I'm going to come back before I sit down. I'm going to do another ten squats. You know, don't don't wait too long to go to the bathroom. <laughs> the squat is dangerous. Do it now. Jumping head. <laughs> 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 That's another thing with Lenavon. So there you go. But, you know, I've been doing squats while I, because I do the Sonicare squat for the 30, and then I'll come up when it beeps, and then I go back down. And so I, but the, every once in a while, when I'm having a strong day, I can go the full two minutes. See? Look at you. And I mean, right. seriously, when I started, it was 10 seconds that I could make, and I felt like I was going to clap. And literally, my husband, I would like, have to like lean on the counter for a minute after <laughs> and brush me. And now we can squat the full two minutes. So the dog that's pretty great. Right. Well, I don't know if you've like, there's a, a term, like it's like bundling, right? It's like a uh, temptation bundling. If you're trying to start something new, like mm-hmm. a work or like you just said, it's the same thing. It's just like, you're going to brush your teeth every day. Like that's yeah. something you're going to do. If you're to attach something that you're less likely to do to that activity or like right after, you eventually it becomes a couple, like a bundle. Um, uh, mm-hmm. so it's just like now when you brush your teeth, you automatically are going to do, you're like, it's just what I do. I do 10 squats when I do this yep. or I do, you know, like, and before you know it, it just becomes a thing. Like you just can't, you wouldn't even imagine your life. Anyway. You're like, am I just going to brush my teeth? This is so boring. Yeah. Like, I'm going to squat. <laughs> I have to do something. Yeah. But you know what? It's so funny though. Even though I've incorporated that into brushing my teeth. I've never thought, I mean, it's the most common sense thing in the world that when I sit down in a chair, I'll do a couple of squats with it. Never crossed my mind. Never crossed my Me mind. Either. So this is, that's amazing. I'm going to totally do that. Also, the one thing, I think one thing that is like, if you're both more mindful and this comes into play with just everything, like how we feel about things, it's most people, when they sit down, they kind of do that and they mm-hmm. like lop onto the chair. Mm-hmm. Who hasn't had, who hasn't had like a rolly chair? I have a rolly chair in my, in my office. I've got one right now. And so if you plop down and you hit it like just at the wrong angle. <laughs> and so that, but that's the kind of then you think you're like, oh my God, I just like pretty much fell into the chair. So if you're more conscious about, I, and this isn't because you can't do it, but it's like when every time you sit down, even if you're on that last squat or if you just like mindfully kind of go and then shift. Like that mm-hmm. in itself is, is, uh, you're engaging more stuff, even if that's the only thing you're doing or you're starting off. It's that purposeful, like, rather than, than sitting down, like, yeah. a flopping down onto a chair, think about what's happening. 
it's the same with walking. A lot of people, and I don't know, I think I, I was in a, in a session somewhere and one of the instructors was saying um, that most people walk to prevent from falling. Like they're just kind of like moving forward, not consciously really engaging mm -hmm. their That's muscles. Right. But it's more of a like, oh, the leg goes forward and I'm catching myself from falling and not a conscious like heel to the ground. I'm engaging the thing. So when you really think about what's working in your body, you're working out all day. Like if you're thinking, yeah. you're like, you know, like most people say it's like sucking in the tummy, which is not, I don't really like that because I think it's that bit wrong, but it's like engaging the core, right? Just like mm -hmm. right. Right. you're engaging the core when you're walking, you're doing. When I was in the military, one of and I can't undo this, but uh, my girl in structure when we walk right when we march we kind of like go very like you march like this and he would always be like when you plant you're like squeeze your butt every time you go like you have to like squeeze it but <laughs> i can't not do it like it just and then it becomes it's like every time you're taking a walk you're working your glutes yeah, well those are giant muscles that we don't use a lot anymore like we're all yeah. conditioned to do so much yeah. sitting that yeah. We do need to kind of think about firing and then engaging them because we mostly That's just sit on them. Well, there's a thing called luteal amnesia that actually a lot of runners have them a lot because you don't actively engage your glutes. You don't engage your glutes, so they just don't know what to do. So eventually they forget to fire for you. It's like rehab that you can do like those clamshells and things. And a lot of people, luteal amnesia, when you have them do a basic clamshell, they can't like it's. They're just like, I'm trying, but they can't actually because their glutes just don't know how to fire. And it's oh my. a rehab. And, and you just forget because, yeah, you're sitting and when you're walking, you're not engaging it. When you're running a lot, you're, a lot of runners, yeah. you're always going forward. And that's why that strength training mm -hmm. is really important for people that are doing a repetitive motion. But you're always going forward. You're not like cross training yeah. anyway. Right. right. So, you mentioned that I went to the doctor once because I was having the worst pain in my knee. And it was whenever I would. Like if I sit oh, yeah. or if I sit in a movie or whatever, it would just start to ache. And he had me lay down on the doctor's table. This doctor is the meanest. You should have seen what I was having. Anxiety. He just, he was not having any of it. Um, so he had me lay back on the table. He grabbed my knees just to watch my inner thigh go bloop, bloop, bloop. And he's like, do you walk a lot? Yeah. And he sh basically showed me, he's like, I, the inner part of your leg doesn't get activated as much when you walk but the outer part does he's like so this must be tight this one's not tight so it's tweaking your right. knee so you mm -hmm. need to balance it out and it's yeah. just putting a lot of pressure on your knee something i you know you think you're walking you're like the whole the whole leg must be doing something but it, no, no, it no. isn't very even so there's a lot of things that you need to balance no, out no. even though you think you're working the whole leg um no. yeah he's like he's like he, said oh we call it walker's knee i was like well oh, yeah so i know that so yeah the, 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 so okay so when we're doing those squats what is that work in that i mean we can kind of feel that's working but it'll be mostly be your lower body all of it like i mean not your necessarily your calf but it'll be if you're pushing through the heels so i should be able to kind of do this mm -hmm. when you're pushing through the heels as you come up you can't see my heels but you want to try to always focus on the heels up versus the toes when you get up, you're almost going to feel like your butt is like squeezing just a tiny bit in that initial one. And then your hands are huh? engaged, get the quads engaged. So it's front to back, like kind of knee and up. Okay. And yeah. Little. So kind of like your hips. Now, if you wanted to make this a little bit more interesting, you can always kind of go here, get a nice little stretch up at the top with the arms and coming down. So it's like, I'm too sore there. today. <laughs> okay. Well, so now. Guys. I want my heels to be taking more of the weight. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Versus, yeah. I mean, you want about like your entire foot towards, but yeah, I find sometimes in the beginning when you're trying to create awareness, when I work with my clients, mostly I'm just like, focus on one thing because it gets your mind activated rather than if you tell your body to sit down or get up, it's going to do what you tell it to do, but it's going to do it the easiest way it knows how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not always the best way to do it. So when you're trying to right. kind of be like, Focus on your heels. Like if you feel your heels, then push up. And then that's what you remember. And it's always a good one to go with. Okay. So like if you're pushing through your heel, it's a good, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it's a good pointer when you're first starting to create awareness. Yeah. 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 And it's it, 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 all kind of direct 
the rest of your muscles. I mean, it's a very different experience if you're kind of leaning towards your toes. Yeah. Hovering <laughs> over versus really. Hi, I want to kind of feel. <laughs> you want to feel over Just like boobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, one thing, like if you're, if you're, you know, getting up and if you're pushing off your toes, Pay attention to what your knees, how your knees feel, because now you're putting your entire body weight on your knees, backing up. Yeah. And you move Yeah, it's very different. Huh? So now, oh, yeah, that doesn't feel good. No, it's it's easier because you're using momentum, right? You're kind of pushing forward. Right. But, um, so those are kind of little things. and uh, But it makes a huge difference when you start thinking about those things and eventually it becomes second nature. Like you wouldn't be able to do that the way. So if you're doing this, another one that you can implement as you're like, as a, want to do 10 of this when I do is a dip on your chair, right? But if you're here, I was terrified you were going to make us do dips. That's <laughs> uh, <it's> a <laughs> one. Now, I've got a rolly chair. I probably shouldn't do dips on my rolly chair. What? No, don't do that. You, yeah, can, I'm gonna, gonna, I, you can you can do it on the ground as well. You just won't have as much of a dip, but you can get a little, a little bit of a dip here, right? Okay. I'm going to go to use it as my dresser. Oh, yeah. You can do that. Okay. The further the legs are, the harder it's going to be. The closer it is. Oh, yeah, my legs. <laughs> right here, right? Oh. Go down. And then if you put your legs out further, then you more have, have more of a body weight, right? Okay. And what you want to do is you don't want your body to be too far back because now your shoulders are doing the thing, right? Right. It's close. I was like, yeah, right there. Now, those are hard, and they're, they're a crowd pleaser. Everyone loves these. I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell me or tell since people might be listening to this, which is kind of, I encourage you all to go to the YouTube or the Facebook. Oh, yeah, but this is going to be an odd one to listen to. I so like. for people like, who are just listening to this, uh, yeah. so we are doing a dip. So it's basically kind of like a tricep workout, right? Yeah, yeah it's purely purely tricep, like purely tricep. Be, yeah, it's pretty. I mean, you get your shoulders engaged, but it's very targeting. Yeah. So if you're if you're got your hands at the edge of a surface, like a blender or a chair, and you kind of bring your butt off the chair mm -hmm. and you just dip yourself down and you try to push up through those palms all the way back up. Okay. So talk to me about your elbows and your shoulders. Do you want your elbows on? Just go back. I'm gonna show it for those that are seeing it, I'm gonna show it front for the full forward. So you want your elbows to be tucked in, so they shouldn't go out. Okay. Uh, okay. And, and as you go down, they kind of track that way. They're going to flare out a little bit. In my eyes, I have a couple of shoulder injuries, so I don't have the mobility. But if you have good mobility, your elbows should, should stay pretty close to your body. And then you push okay. up from there. The further out you are, the more you're going to feel in your shoulders, and less in your tricep. And also, okay. put your shoulders at a predicament there. And when you start, right. out, it could just be... It could be a half an inch, right? Don't think that you have to go into a full dip. Sometimes all you got to do is like a right there, that's all I got. And I'm going to come back up. And then eventually you'll work your way into it. And you're going to feel, even if you do half dips, you're going to feel those in your arms. Oh, I did that about it. Okay. Yeah. And so this is another thing that you can just totally do at your desk. Absolutely. Yeah. And the same with, I mean, if you do like a dresser, it works really well, but you can do push ups against the wall i'm not someone that pushes push-ups but it's like it is really one that you can do anywhere because you could do it either if you're starting out ooh, against the wall right okay. like you could go near and yeah, i'm like wondering if i can go here i never this like, one sliding <laughs> door no <laughs> the beard is really good. i'm not even on the can anymore you can do it on your like yeah i wouldn't do it on a rolly chair but you could do it on your chair and you can yeah Either put the the yes, your body no. completely into that plank position, or you could keep your hip hinged if you're not strong enough quite yet, and kind of dip through here. Oh, interesting! You, know, it, you have to work your way up a little bit, right? And then so ah. right here, and you bring it back up, and so the closer again. Anytime you put the body, your body's closer, the easier it's going to be. The further away, the harder it's going to be. For that. So how do you do it on the wall? I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. put it on my slide. Yeah, if you're on the wall, I'm gonna be on it. <laughs> the further away your the further away your feet are, the harder it's gonna be, right? Okay. You're pretty much just gonna go a bit then shoulder width apart, and you're gonna push in a bit lower here, and then you push away. And so you don't get as much down. I get all my towels over here that are until on the face. My feet. Okay, we'll throw those down. Okay. 
Just lean in. I much prefer the wall. Push-ups have always been so hard for me. Yeah. The wall helps. I never knew the wall was an option. Yeah, of course it is. It is. It's a good, if you, that's, again, it's like, if you don't have anything else, like you don't have the room on the floor either in your closet or wherever you are. It's like, use what you got on the wall. Yeah. Uh, and the, clearly they're not as challenging as on the ground, but if that, you know, it's so. Yeah. We're talking about new, just getting moving, right? <laughs> I like that. Look at this new world tube open. Oh, I think one important one that I really like it's um, uh, glued bridges that are on the ground. Like when we, because we sit along, we want to make sure, because we're always in this kind of like this position, we want to make sure that we get with the squats, do a bit of it, but we want to get that extension, right? Like this is important to counterbalance what we do sitting down all day so if you're yeah on the, you can do this on the ground i think the glute bridge is one of the biggest ones to do when you're sitting a lot if we're here just kind of push up so we're extending because we're always flex take it down and bring it up are you, why are you getting we're, down miss hey are we glute bridging we're doing it no. <laughs> this is hysterical <laughs> And bridges. If you, I like to keep my uh, hands on my hip bones because it's going to kind of show you that you're even, right? That you don't like, if you have uneven hips or that you're pushing through, take it back down and bring it back up. Like doing these, incorporating these daily really make a difference. If you're more advanced, you can always put one leg and then go with one leg. So if you're oh my right. God, I am not advanced. Okay. <laughs> so you just said something that made me think of a question. Like yes. I can remember hearing for years, like you don't want to work the same muscle group two days in a row. You don't want to overwork it. But then you said, do a glute bridge every day. So should we really be worrying about that? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, when we're talking about those, we're talking more bodybuilder, like someone that is really hitting it super hard, like from a right. resistance perspective, like I wouldn't tell you to lift heavy on your legs today and then go tomorrow and do another heavy leg lift. But we consider these, Mobility. You can do mobility every single day. Now, a body weight squat, maybe the push ups and the dip, don't do them every day just because if you're just starting out, you might get sore and you don't want to do them. But like, there's no reason why you can't do some squats every day. Like those, right? I mean, once if you did like 100 pound squats, then I wouldn't tell you to do it twice. <laughs> but I, like, for instance, I've changed my workouts as I got older and I've had a bunch of injuries to uh do more full body workouts every like every time that i work out it's a full body workout i just don't work the exact same exercises or i don't do the same because i feel like for me and i feel like most people benefit from this that have time constraints you want to hit as much as you can because you don't know if tomorrow you're going right. to work out right you don't know right and then now nowadays i feel like if you got kids in school, you might get that call that someone got COVID and now you're getting your yep. to go to school the next week. What do you do then? Yeah. You know? So right. I feel like that kind of stuff. Um, what if you said, ah, oh, man, now I can't do my leg workout that I plan tomorrow. Like, I feel like it's more conducive to start with a full body workout. Yeah. And this is something that we kind of get into with menopause. Um, I highly recommend that women stay within 40 minutes, like make your workouts about 40 minutes, just from a cortisol perspective. It makes that is another thing that I have been reading about lately is yeah. that yeah. we don't want to increase our cortisol levels. So where does, yeah, so 40 so minutes. Me, and, tell me what that means. What, so if you were work out more, that increases yeah. your cortisol more? Yeah. It, it's more of a time perspective. Like if you, there's like a threshold of time within like after 40, 45 minutes, your cortisol increases. Because when you think about it, it's a stress, stress response. Exercise is a stress, a stress, even if it's good stress, right? It's like your body is going to, uh, there's, there's a more output from cortisol. During menopause, cortisol is a problem anyway, just because your estrogen's gone, that estrogen's kind of like created like that balance. Now that is gone. Now cortisol is having a big party. And now you don't want to <laughs> breathe. It's like mother's out of the house and a real party. Like, <laughs> and I think so, I would say that as I finished off my wine. <laughs> cortisol party. Party. Buttery cortisol. Yeah. So I, I, I get a lot of like, are you sure? And I, I mean, I've always been the proponent of do your workouts shorter, but do them more purposeful and more intense. 
I think is really good news for busy people. Like, yeah. you don't have to go to the gym and spend an hour and a half. Like, no, not that you want to, which is, you know, if you, but I, I don't think that it isn't in your benefit if you're going through menopause and depending on your symptoms. These are general guidelines. If cortisol is an issue, if stress is an issue, you don't want your workout to be long. Um, if you are a runner and uh, the only thing that keeps your mental health in check is a 10 mile run, then by all means go do your 10 mile run because cortisol is not going to be your issue, right? But I feel like well, a big part of women that go through perimenopause are like, if you have kids, it's like, it's a stressful time. If you don't have kids, it's also, it could be all sorts of life changes going on in midlife, right? Yeah. You already have plenty of stress. Your body is at war with itself. And so you don't want extra stuff happening. And so it's just like, I also feel like there comes some empowerment when you say, science says that 40 minutes is a good time to work out. So yeah. it gives you that, almost sure. like that permission to be like, it's what it should be. And 40 minutes is more than plenty of time to work out. If you know what you're doing and what, you know, there's no reason you should be working out anymore. That 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 does not the same for mind body exercise and yoga. Like if it's your normal, not your hybrid yogas or like um, those can be longer. Like your tai chi's, your hatha yoga, walking you can do. It's more when you add some resistance to it. Now also it. I want to mention that high intensity exercise increases your cortisol as well. So you probably wouldn't want to do. I'm a huge. I love high intensity. I've always been like a fast and furious kind of person. I do the sprint. I don't like to do the long run. Like that half marathon, you couldn't pay me to do it. I just, I've never, <laughs> never been interested in it. It bores me to death to think that I'm going to be doing something for an hour and a half. Yeah. And but that's in everything in life. That's why I, I have four jobs because I just like to do things. Just a piece of that, a piece of that, a piece of that. I don't want to do the same thing every day. Yeah. And so, but so I also like to say. I like, again, balancing out, right? Your mental health should be your first priority, your quality of life during menopause, which is my core thing that in all my work, quality of life is it. It's not weight loss. And that I, I just really don't like to, to even mention it because I feel like it's such a big moneymaker, the menopause mm -hmm. weight loss market. Mm -hmm. um, but the quality of life perspective during menopause, I think we need to have more discussion and I could talk about this for hours, but we need to come together and think about what is it that increases my quality of life. For me, if you told me that now I am, uh, I'm 47, so I do high intensity workouts, even though they increase my hot flashes a little bit, but my brain needs, like, I just need it. So you kind of have to counterbalance what's more important because one thing might increase your, you know, you might have a little bit more of a hot flash. If you are have hot flashes, high intensity workouts tend to increase the butt, uh, you have to kind of figure that out. So like I do less high intensity workouts now and I do a little bit more heavy lifting. Like you find that balance on what is it that you need for your mm -hmm. quality of life. Like if I ask both of you, like what are like two things that increase your quality of life, like that you cannot do without it. Uh, and it's not family. Like we can't family. <laughs> hard. But like for yourself. Like, what is it that really, like, when you think about it, you just like that, that is what I like. It really just fills me with joy. So I would not have said this six months ago, but in the last six months, I have been, I've been working on adding exercise into my day in a way that felt manageable because I'd gotten really carried away with like, I've got to go to a class and I need to, you know, be on the bike for an hour or I, whatever it was, I felt like it needed to be massive and, um, uh, now I work out for about half an hour every day and I do strength training primarily. And I can tell the difference. There are days when I don't get to it. And there were even a couple of days last week where I purposely didn't do it. It was just a crazy week. And I just said, I'm taking a couple of days off. It affected my brain big time. So I know now that is something that is like a huge quality of life. And then also I'm a downtime person. Like I need alone time. And sometimes those things go together. Like, okay. yeah, and yeah. do my workout by myself. And mine's walking. I just, yeah, I just love, 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 love walking, preferably hiking or somewhere near water or with trees. And so 
luckily we have some of those options here around Austin and they're yeah. starting to cool off a little bit. So that's been nice. I try to think of my second one. Is it is it exercise related or anything? No, I don't like to I do it like outside too is the other thing I can't live without. Like I have to get outside and play in the dirt. Maybe not every day, but the day is better if I had not some of that. It's going to be yeah. kind of dumb. But um, my husband and I have started, like when we order takeout food, we go in the car together and we call it our date night. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like the, the kids laugh at us so much because if one of the kids is like, hey, can I go with you tonight? And then the other one's like, no, that's their date time. <laughs> because we ride in the car together. So yeah, so we're going to go pick up. And that kind of talks about how much takeout we've been doing, which we have been doing. I'm going to do another little plug here, not quite as much as the soda stream, but the website, she likes food.com. Oh, Ooh, I've never heard of it. Cause she is vegetarian. My daughter's vegetarian and has been for half a decade now. And for the longest yeah. time we were just like, have some macaroni. So we like, we just, we didn't know what to do with it. And now we've decided we make a vegetarian meal and then add meat instead of making a meal and just giving her whatever didn't have meat in it. We're specifically making a balanced vegetarian meal. And then if my husband and her son want to supplement it with meat, they just make meat. So I tell you every single one of those recipes. And I used to okay. laugh because the Rachel Ray 30 minute meals, like I have never had one done in the under 90 minutes, <laughs> but these 30 minute meals are true 30 minute meals and most of them are like one or two bowls max like she's oh, really good around everything. like just dump everything in this bowl um and it's a lot of similar ingredients so there's a lot of uh, either yellow or zucchini squash and then various peppers and yeah it's everything's just really tasty super easy so yeah we've been trying to get out of our takeout rut by doing that but then that means we don't get as many date nights <laughs> driving, <laughs> driving the crazy thing. Thing. No, I love that you got creative with your date nights because we yeah. can't remember the last time we were on a date. Well, now we cook together too. But at the time that we would have spent driving, we just been like chopping things together. So, and the kids get in on it too. So it works out. That's and that's, I mean, that's a great comparison too. Like the, the food aspect of, you know, I feel like during during menopause, there's such a big push to to now you have to eat differently because you know you're yeah. in menopause and no longer can eat the things that you used to. How many times do we hear that? It's just like you can no longer like that SNL skit from forever ago where it's like mom, the mom cheats, right? Yeah, but now <laughs> you're a mom, you can't wear these <laughs> anymore. Like you need to wear it's just accepted. Mom jeans is what you need now. It's the same thing as like. You're a lady of a certain age and you can't eat what you used to eat. You should follow this diet. And that, and so it's this, there's this push to always be like, oh my God, and now I can't eat this anymore. And I definitely shouldn't eat that. And I definitely shouldn't drink. And then I shouldn't do that. And so I feel like we have such a bad approach to deleting things, like taking yes. things away instead of putting things in, right? So it's, it's, if anyone says that they're giving you a menopause diet, you should immediately either unfollow them or you should, whatever they're doing, it's like delete, unfollow, uh, unplug from whatever. It's like, it doesn't exist. There, that is good advice. I like it. There's no such thing as a menopause diet. Very much. Women don't need to eat differently because they're in menopause. And obviously, right. I'm trying to sell you something on top of it. Then it does. I followed a lot of accounts of like uh, intuitive eating and and people that specialize in maybe women in midlife, just like I specialize in women in fitness. Although there isn't a magic bullet, there's just more information that you should be aware of and more symptoms and more things, right, that we need to be aware of when we go through menopause. But right. anyone that's trying to tell you some magic bullet in any way just needs to go. And so I'm a big proponent of adding things like, for instance, I, and I just did this today, and I don't know why I haven't thought of it, but I start my day with a piece of toast with either peanut butter or cream cheese and jelly and a hard-boiled egg. Like, that, it's just what I do. It's, it brings me joy with a glass of milk. And then today, I was just like, what if I added some chia to my jelly? That's omega-3. I mean, new world. 
<laughs> so instead of instead of like someone might come in and say, well, no, 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 you can't get started today with bread and jelly. I mean, who does that? Don't you know how old you are? It's amazing. And so, yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, it's just quality of life. Like I get up and that is something that brings me joy and there's no reason for me to stop doing that. And uh, right. so now I add a, because I always have a, a jar of, of activated Gia in my fridge. Gia. Chia in my, not Gia. Gia is not in my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, activated. So if you don't know what activated Chia is, so people know. Mary, I was getting ready to ask. If you have the Chia seeds, you know, they have to soak for 10, 15 minutes to activate. Otherwise, if you throw them in and eat them immediately, they don't do what they're supposed to do. So interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I put them in a Tupperware, put some chia in there, put some water in it, shake it up, put it in my fridge, and then it creates that jelly, right? That gelatin uh -huh. kind of chia stuff. And I put yeah. that into my shake. It's a uh, chia. It's great for omega three, and so we need a lot of that. And now I mix it up with a tablespoon of chia, put it on my toast, and now I'm like, boom, power every morning. That like, sounds delicious. delicious. I know. I mean. I'm going to activate my chia seeds as soon as we're done with this. And that's what I'm having for breakfast tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I love those with GM and I don't let myself have it. And that's crazy. Yeah. And there are some, I mean, clearly, I mean, I, there are jams and jellies that are not as sugar loaded as other. Right. So I do pay attention to that. So I do buy the one that isn't like 14 grams of sugar per tablespoon because I also don't like the taste of that sweetness. But there's yeah. no reason I you also you don't need three tablespoons of jelly on your bread. Like generally it's just the, <laughs> but if my point is in the end, it's like, we need to get away from telling ourselves and being told that we need to stop doing things and we need to take away things to be thinner or look different. I feel like we can add things to it that make, make it, it's more health promoting. And I, I put it today on how Instagram was about that. It's like, let's add more health promoting to the same with movement. You don't have to go to the gym. Resistance training is great, but what if you like to dance? There's no reason why you can't dance. Why there's no reason why you can't do like gardening, you know, like those kinds of things. It isn't about you have to do a certain thing. Again, resistance training, I think, is really a, should be a priority for most everyone, every woman, to do some weight bearing exercises and some impact. So for your bones, like little hops or little jumps and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And so those kinds of things, like, yeah, adding them in like tiny pieces, like my piece was putting a chia on my jelly and that you're not going to change my world now. Tomorrow might be something <laughs> different. And I mean, I'm not talking about this and just today, like you were saying, you sit on a chair, but you've never thought about doing a squat on a chair. And sometimes yes. things happen and you're just like, what the oh. fuck is this? I mean, or a push up on the wall. I mean, yeah. Seriously. Or squatting while I brush my teeth. Yeah. I just stand there and brush my teeth. Definitely not and just came thing. up with that idea, but it works out. But oh, okay, we're getting close to the end here. And I want to do a couple because you just mentioned gardening. So yeah. gardening, you are right. I mean, that will work every muscle in your body if yeah. you are doing a lot of it. Uh, my kids like to laugh at me because I have a really weak core and back. <laughs> and so I get to the point where if I do so much digging and gardening where I'm in a bad position or whatever, like I'll just like try to get out of the couch and I will literally let almost collapse. Like my back just is like done. And I'll just yeah. have to just sit there on the ottoman for a minute, just kind of lean over like, okay, kids, just don't worry about mommy. I'm okay. Just, yeah. I just going to one inch at a time. I'm going to stand up here. Um, so I know I need to be doing more for my core. And I know that, and I hate to be like, cause we're trying to be positive here. But I'm I'm not feeling exceptionally positive about how my core is looking right now. And I yeah, know that's yeah. part of and it's but it also functionally, it's not just aesthetically. It's if I was stronger, I should not be collapsing on the ottoman <laughs> when I'm getting up yeah, yeah, couch after yeah, a day of gardening. Yeah. And I also have learned through because I've had to actually do physical therapy for my back that, you know, it isn't just an ab workout. It's the balance of the ab and the back. And like, yeah, really thinking about your core as your entire core, not just mm -hmm. trying to get washboard abs. So I'd love to get your thoughts on kind of like something not, I don't want to say easy because the work is, you know, it's not going to be just like sitting on the couch, but something that without a ton of space or without extra equipment that people can do. So the core is one of those things, just like I was saying with the glutes earlier, like if you become aware of how much it actually works. 
you can engage it in almost anything that you do. Like it, it doesn't have to be a, I have to sit down and I have to do a bunch of crunches because like, for instance, when we were doing the push ups earlier on the fence, right? Not only is it the front, but it's also the back. And like what you were mentioning when you're looking at your core should be your hip girdle. So it should be the, all the muscles that kind of go around and that go around your glutes and your core, right? So it should be, all of this should be trained together. So when okay. we did those um, glute bridges earlier, like for instance, if, if we do those glute bridges again, and uh, I go back on it, had, no, no, you don't, you don't have to, but if you wanted to, <laughs> we can just watch this. this. I'm going. If you did this and then brought your arms over, I want to hold and it'll feel how much your core, like if your butt's up, okay. that glute feel. bridge, like bring your hips up into that position. Oh, wait. And then do bring your, yeah, bring your hips up and then bring your arms over and now kind of squeeze like in the middle here. Now, when you oh, bring it over without moving your hips, bring those arms back over and you're going to feel your core engage. And if you add a little weight to it, it's going to be even more. Like you should feel a nice good stretch and you bring it up. This is small stuff, right? But so how much weight? Like they don't have fancy weights. Like if they just get a couple soup cans, like how much weight do you need? Absolutely. I mean, you, like I said, it's like, you don't actually need any weight, but if you have, uh, I have a chihuahua that's nine pounds. So that would. <laughs> it could be a milk jug. It could be uh, like there, you also don't have to add any weight. Now for core, if you're standing up, for instance, this one's a good one too. If you just, you don't have any ring. If we're here and you bring your leg up, now you get a little bit right here, right? Now you're working your hip flexor a little bit. This is a little Thai bow action here, right here. You know what's that for them? I loved Thai bow back in the day. Right. And length. Elbow coming down. Yeah. So right here, you're going to go here. Now, if you want to, well, the great part about this is like you get some balancing action in here as well. Now be mindful. Yeah. Anytime you work it, be mindful about what you actually work. Like think about your core and what's happening rather than you bringing just like knee to the elbow. but Give it that little grip. Bring it up. You can reel it here. Bring it up. I'm just, oh yeah. You can feel, I'm you, cheating by bringing my elbow down further. And you're going to feel your glutes engage as well in your hips, right? You get a little bit of action over here. So those, and that's that, good. I like that one. This one's a good one as well. Like if you're here, you're going to go crop. So let me go up here. And isn't there something about crossing the midline that's good for our old brains? Yeah, it's almost like, think of highways. You're like going straight and then you do crisscross and you're like, I'm crashing over to the other side. It's way more fun. Like, yeah, you doing crisscross stuff is good for your brain. Like, we're I, okay. Okay. can you walk us through this one again? And let's talk about <laughs> people in the listening on the podcast. I want to make sure I'm doing this right. I've never done this exercise before. I've been doing like yes. hundreds of exercise classes. So we're standing so, up. The, yes. So is this the one to the front of the side? The one where we crossed over, where we did the crossover. Yeah. So it's almost like when you, it's a standing hand to toe, like what you wouldn't know. Remember when we, like maybe in TE class, you kind of went down to touch yeah. the toes? Yeah. That, but we're doing it standing. So therefore getting a little bit of a, uh, a core well, opposite. There we go. And I mean, if you do this, you're going to snap Bob. You should feel your hamstrings get a good stretch here. Yeah. You can use a, you can use a little momentum too. Like if you do this in more of a, like a boom over done here, a little mobility there. Are we supposed to keep our legs straight or bending a little or what? I mean, mine are bending just because they have to, but is that what you're supposed to Mine are bending because, yeah, mine are bending because I don't have the flexibility, but okay. <laughs> if you have the flexibility, you probably want them straight, but mine, I mean, I get to here and I'm like, okay, I can't cut this one. <laughs> That's why I had more of a... Swing. Yeah. Here is another one, which is a, a windmill, which is an easy one to do, but not easy. But if you're in a kind of wide stand and you have one hand, so if I have my left hand on my left side, you raise one arm and you're going to come and slide your hand down. Now you kind of tipped over and you have that engagement here. Now push up through here again and keep it on straight. And it's a nice stretch too. 
Yep. Oh, yeah. This one, one you are going to have to go watch the video of because we're not going to be doing <laughs> this one. Yeah, we can't describe yeah. this. You know what I'll do tomorrow? I'll post a little video of all of these exercises on my Instagram and I'll tag you. Oh, and then you'll know, we'll share it. Because that way I'll do a description of just here are some pilot workouts that we covered. And I'll add a couple more because I had a couple of upper back stretches as well. No, I'll do that and I'll tag you and you can share it. And I know we're running out. Can I show you one more thing? Yes, please. Oh, sure. Okay. Sure. Your hip hinge. A little trick I'm going to share with everyone. Your hip hinge, which is very important when we're right again, that's sitting. And most people don't know how to do a proper hinge, which is this motion here. Like the bending forward. You have a tool there. What do you have? It's a Green? dowel. I'm just, it's just, just it's okay. okay. So people could just use a broom or whatever. Absolutely. And you don't need one. But this is, for instance, if you or don't. On step stool. Maybe not. You <laughs> might break your back there. But uh, <laughs> because it's going to go on your back. Oh, no. Oh, I oh, oh. Okay. okay. I'm putting my thing away. I'm going to tear it from here so you can see it. So if you put that stick on your tailbone and your head, when you bend forward, it's going to stay touching. And that's the proper hinge, like nice and straight. If you squat, it's going to come off. You got to round it back. So that is kind of like learning how to do this to where it stays nice and straight, that proper hinge. Got it. If your hips and your lower back, really happy. And you're going to feel a nice little stretch here in the hamstrings as well. I hope that's that mention, you got it. You got it. <laughs> And it's nice and straight, right? The dowel just helps to make that connection, but you don't need a dowel if you're kind of going here, like you're bending forward without going down. Yeah. And so you create that nice straight back here yeah. and then oh, you, you come up here. Or you just watch yourself in a video. <laughs> so it's again. And on your, like if you're, yeah, I saw like you kind of had your upper back rounded like this. Yeah. So I'm trying to fix that. Chest out, kind of imagine you're drawing back and then keep it that way as you go down. Okay. I, this is to all the big, the big booby girls out there. Oh. You know what? I really feel like I, mm-hmm. yeah, there's so much hunting. Yep. If you stand up straight, it can, it's a lot of, you're like, hello. Yeah. And then <laughs> be proud of them. It's, it's that, it's it. that, uh, so, like subtract, so, like, uh, subscapular, so, like retraction here, like, uh, practicing this a little bit more, like working these muscles right here because they tend to be in this position, right? All day. We spin a lot also, like this. This is a good one to do just as a, like a stretch during the day, like right there. Or if you're interlacing your, I have really bad shoulder mobility because I've had my shoulders dislocated a couple of times, but no. right there. Uh, and then the same good. for the lower, uh, for the upper back. So you're going to interlace your hands. Push them out in front of you, and then imagine that a beach ball kind of like is between your hands and your chest. You're creating okay. a nice, a lot of room in that upper back. Like it's almost hitting Ooh. your chest and you're creating that roundness. Oh, that, that one, do that while you're sitting. I mean, it feels so good because you're creating kind of like space there. Yeah. And then you can also do this kind of torso twist, right? When you're sitting on the chair, mm-hmm. you kind of hold on to the chair and reach over to the other side. And then the same thing the other way. Sometimes you get a good little crackety crack. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, this is good. That's so good. Yeah. So those are a couple, but I, I love that concept of making space in here. Mm-hmm. That I love how you said that because yeah, that's what it is. Like you want to open, open the body because we sit. Like if you're sitting a lot, you kind of like always in that position. Yeah. It's just like I it took me forever, and I still have kind of rounded shoulders because I grew up with a lot of boy cousins and when I started having yep. food it was kind of like, kind of like I can't you know it's like I was the only girl and I was just like I'm gonna have to yeah 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 and I, I was think always a lot of us do that because yep. you feel yep. like if you were standing yeah. up straight that you're being yep. obscene like it's almost like yep. yeah there you are but that's how it- I grew height wise and these babies early I was young and so I was tall oh. now I'm not tall but in the fourth grade this was tall and I was very self-conscious of all of it. I didn't want to be taller than my friends. And I'm certainly, I'm the only one in the training girl. I didn't like that. And so I certainly started curling up into myself. Yeah. Okay. So we're on curling. I do. 
uncurl, uncurl. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like you said it. I feel most people feel like if I put my chest out and you don't have to exaggerate it, but if I do that, then it's kind of like, oh, well, who does she think she is like presenting herself, right? Yeah. And, but it, it, you it, almost have to counter balance. I don't have a really large breast, so I can't really uh, relate to the weight <laughs> from the front. However, I'm mean, right. not that weight. I mean, you're counterbalancing, right? It's like, that it's much easier to kind of leave it. Yeah, that's hard. Your back works a lot when you're sitting straight. Yeah. Uh, so doing, doing uh, like these kinds of movements, like yeah. being mindful of just like straight arm and push it back, like this can help create some movement and just like strengthening those little muscles underneath the shoulder blade. Uh, it does with two inch movement, but it's just nice and out and do it. And your claws are within that too. If you add a, like we're hugging. <laughs> if you add a little bit of a very odd robot. <laughs> well, those are tiny little tips. So many more. Are oh, it's like, good. I love it. I love that. So everybody needs to follow you on Instagram because really every day there's something there that's useful and you can do it for a few minutes. And it's it's just at your name, right? At Dr. Maria. Is that it? Yeah, Dr. Maria Luque. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Maria Luque. It's your whole name. Okay. Yeah. And on Facebook, on Facebook, it's Fitness and Menopause. I try to do videos at least three or four times a week where I share something that is anyone you should be able to do it. Or if you have some equipment, you can because it's like a lot of people yeah. are just kind of like, what if I don't have equipment? It's like, if you get, I'm gonna invest ten dollars, buy yourself some resistance bands, and you're good to go. Like they have so much variety. And you don't need to invest a lot of money. You don't have to have a set of dumbbells. There's a lot of things that you can do that you don't need a lot of money. So let's think about five minutes. Like if you can do five minutes every day of something and that's it. Don't even anything else. I'm not going to change anything else. Five minutes of movement, whatever that may be. And I think that that's how you get better. It's like next week is going to be maybe 10 minutes. And then like Missy was saying, it's just when you start feeling how great it feels, then you're just like, I can't do without it. Like, this is just something I need for my mental health and my body. I'm going to make sure for people, for, for Maria Luque, it's L-U-Q-U-E. And we will have it in our show notes. And yeah, so yeah, we can definitely find you. I'm, you know, I'm super excited. I'm very thankful that I was able to come here and share some knowledge with you and your audience. And so anytime, I really am open to answering any questions. I know a lot of people say that, but I really do enjoy sharing knowledge and helping people just make small changes so if anybody has any kind of like hey i have this what can i do like send me a message and i'll i'll, I'll gladly cover it because generally there's someone else that has the same question and does so i i will take the time to answer the questions and oh, wow. i'll have a newsletter so if you want to stay in the know you just subscribe to my newsletter and so great and that right. thing or just at your website people can sign up to there Yes, on the website, also on my link tree and my Instagram, but on my website, I have a, a brand new launch, new look. So it's very exciting. I have lots of blogs on there if you want to like, yeah, that is super exciting. So go check it out at fitness. I mean, it's like fitnessandmenopause.com. Fitness um, yeah. Uh, All right. Subscribe, tell your friends about it and uh, let me know what you need. Oh, for I'm so glad we did it. Like, right. learned a ton, and I feel encouraged that menopause isn't like a, some no. sort of prison sentence. It's, it's a bad word for so much of our lives. And now I just think a lot of us are here or will soon be here, there. And it's a beginning, like you said it. earlier. To me, it's total freedom. I'm it. sorry. I told you we were talking before we started recording, but for a lot of women who have suffered with very either painful or heavy, or just horrifying periods. It's it's actually a freedom for me. I'm I'm very excited. I know there's some stuff to deal with in the in between, but I think it's all manageable. And especially, you know, I think trying it, to keep it's looking at the opportunities. Right? right, it's like where what's new to come? What can I do rather than what I couldn't do? And then I'm a, I'm going to launch a course, like a 12 week course that is based on just that of just like how do we change mindset of how does fitness play a role in it and that kind of stuff because it is we have to look at it as a new opportunity for something new rather than like now my like fertile life ends and therefore my womanhood is gone you know it's like well it's great <laughs> yeah very, very liberating very liberating <laughs> do it yeah that's true so i like look 
There, uh, yeah, there's a lot of pluses out there, so we need to have more conversations about those. I know. My favorite is my over-optimistic clue app that, like, it'll be like, it's day 240 of, you know, of your cycle. <laughs> your period starts tomorrow. I'm like, no, it doesn't clue. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and man designed, and man designed clue. And that they're just like, <laughs> your period always starts the next day. It doesn't matter what's going on. Either pregnant or, or at that time of life. And so, yeah, yeah. either way, you might want to talk to a professional. Yeah, but that's, that's liberating. <laughs> Look at it, you're just counting. It's like your chap, it's like 297 days of freedom. And so it's just like yes. more and more to come. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's great. But, but thanks I for having those conversations. Love that all you're doing. Yes. Thank you so much for teaching us these exercises. You have changed my relationship with my chair forever. <laughs> I want to not, not take that out of context. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you have changed my but I'm glad I did. So <laughs> I want to hear all about how that made a difference and how you now are doing a hundred spots every day. Let's hear yeah. it. Let's know that you did. Wow. Thank, you so well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. I'm going to take a right. live. All okay. right. Bye to all our friends who are here. And everybody to look for him to show notes for all the great information. Thank you so much for joining us for the mom and dot, dot, dot podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's show. And if you know someone else who could benefit from the episode, please be sure and share it with them. And while we're begging, please subscribe and rate us wherever it is you listen to podcasts. You can find links to all the things we discussed today in our show notes or over at our website, momandpodcast.com with the A and D spelled out. In between shows, find us over at the socials, including our private mom and community Facebook group. The links to that group and all of our socials can be found at momandpodcast.com. Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate you more than you know. Now go out there and make your ellipses count.